Welcome to Glow! Glow is an all-female powered team that basically focuses on anything skincare, whether it's injectables, lasers, skincare, you name it, um, to make people feel their best. We offer everything from medical grade lasers to injectables, Botox, filler, Sculptra, you name it as far as the beauty industry world and we basically have it here at Glow. And Our target client is basically anyone, male, female, anywhere in between from the ages of 18 to 100 years old. Uh, what I'm doing at Glow today is getting my yearly top up with the beautiful nurse Chelsea. Um, it's something that I do prophylactically as I don't like to wear a lot of makeup. It's just a general maintenance thing for me. Um, we need to basically fix my whole face. <laughs> so the first thing I always ask is, how do you want to feel? Like, do you want to feel, people always want to look better, but do you want to feel more awake? Do you want to feel tighter, more defined? What is the goal? Yeah, I've been feeling a little bit tired. I want to feel a little bit more Meg and Foxy. Okay. A little more. <laughs> <laughs> Fold back. Fold back. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Head back to your party. So first, I'm just going to take a look, kind of assess where her bone structure is, which of course is amazing. We just want to see what's typical as we age is this fat pad here starts to fall and that causes the three main symptoms that most people complain about, which is a little bit of tear trough action, a little bit in the nasal labial fold, and then finally this little bit of pre-jowling. We usually like to combat that by doing a little bit of what we call full face, it's been called many things, full face filler, global rejuvenation, eight point lift, they're all kind of this one of the same, but it's basically using certain vectors of the face to pull some tissue back up to where it feels like it used to be or give the illusion of a lift with filler. So basically what we look for when we're treating someone's lips is their hydration level. Are they due for filler? Kira is very blessed with a large base already, which is great. Um, what typically happens, especially in the summer, is you can see she's starting to get a little bit dehydrated, meaning these little fine lines are starting to appear and she's used to having that really hydrated not overly full lip, just hydrated and glossy. And I think that's the part that she's missing. So today we're gonna go in with a light filler that's gonna be superficial and right into those lines so that she feels nice and glossy and juicy. What we're doing right now is basically just finding the apex of Kiara's cheek. Because all of these measurements are based on her and her alone. They're completely customized to her no one else's face. We want all of these injection points to make sense for her, not necessarily be cookie cutter. So basically today we're gonna to use almost 100% Juvederm products. Kira's got a really good metabolism. She likes to burn through things a little bit. So we're gonna use something that's long lasting, gonna get her through for a while, somewhere between a year and 18 months. Um, we're basically gonna use every filler line has an array of products that range from high G prime, meaning a lot of pull, they're really going to give structure to something with lower G prime, meaning very soft, very stretchy, moldable. So we're going to go with Volux in her jawline. That's going to give her the most structure, most bang for her buck as far as like a lifting capacity. Then we're going to work down. We're going to go to Voluma for her cheek, something a little bit softer. You don't want something so intense that she starts to look a little maleficent in the cheek. So we're going to go to something a little less. And then we're going to go to Volift, which is the lower G prime product. That's good for stuff like in the mid face, anything that's gonna move and really express because you don't want that to feel stiff and hard. All right, so we're gonna start with um, Volux in Kiera's submalar region here. We're gonna use this to lift her lower face, particularly this little pre-jowl region here. So we're just gonna start right onto bone here. We're gonna pull back one, two, three, little pinch, babe. Good, good. So we're aspirating, we're pulling back just to make sure we're in a safe plane. No blood there, which is good. And then we're just gonna press a little bit of pressure here, girly. So exact same product, we're basically starting everything lateral. The more we lift laterally, the less filler she's going to need in her mid face, which is always ideal. It prevents us from feeling really heavy. So we're gonna go right back into her jawline here. This is her mandibular angle. 
this point just helps to give us all that jawline that everyone is raving about. A little bit of pressure here, Curly. And it helps to give a vector to provide a little bit of lift, which is nice also. There's definitely a place for both cannula and needle, but usually in these areas we wanna be on bone. So this one is Voluma. We're basically gonna use this guy to give some lateral cheek projection. We're gonna use this right on the apex of Kira's cheek and her lateral zygoma. That's basically gonna help to create a natural highlight that everyone wants when they're contouring their makeup or putting highlighter on. They want this nice shelf with a little bit of highlight where the light reflects off. So same thing right onto bone, little pinch girly yoke. Beautiful. Same thing, just pulling back to make sure that we're not in the vessel. Amazing, and a little bit of pressure. Beautiful. Okay, so now we're just taking a look at Kira's chin, and she's most Caucasian women are just slightly recessed, which is what we're kind of seeing here. I want more of her chin to match the projection of her nose and bottom lip. So we're just gonna pop that out the slightest bit. It's gonna make her feel more triangle as opposed to an upside down triangle. Um, and then we're gonna do a little bit along the sides, which is just gonna help what we call a pre-gel sulcus. So it's gonna give the illusion that this jawline is nice and flat by pulling it tight from both angles. Yeah, and then just open your mouth for me slightly, just let it hang, yeah, perfect. One, two, three, pinchy. So now what we're doing here is I'm just, I'm pinching her chin basically to see where there's some laxity. And I can see that there's two little lines that need a little bit more support here. So same thing, we're using Volux right onto bone just to help her little pre-gel sulcus. This same thing is just all to create the illusion that this gel line is nice and flat and that those fat pads are right where they were five years ago. What's nice about all these techniques is that we're basically treating all the areas of the face with the least amount of filler possible. You don't really ever want to have a ton of filler in your face. A little can really go a long way, especially when you're lean like Kiara, so. How is the procedure going so far, Kiara? It's really good. I am one of Chelsea's unique clients and I refuse the numbing cream because her fillers all come with lidocaine built into it. So as soon as she injects it, you can't feel anything anyways. How often are you having these procedures done? I do this usually once a year or when I'm feeling flat through my face because I don't like to wear makeup. I like to wake up and feel like I'm full can go out with my day. So this really helps with all of that. Okay, so today we're gonna use some um, Volift. It's a light filler, low G prime, so it's gonna move really well when she smiles. Um, we are gonna use this in the nasolabial fold. We're gonna be using it with a cannula. So I don't know if you can see that. It's a completely blunt object there. This is not a needle. So what this is gonna do is gonna wiggle through the tissue as opposed to puncturing it. Reason being is that there's some major arteries that run through here, and we really never wanna hit those. Whether it's bruising or vascular occlusion, anything like that, we don't wanna mess with that. So we're gonna be introducing this sliding up and filling this little region called her piriform aperture. It's just gonna help to make that a little bit softer. Okay. So this is an introducer. We're just gonna little pinch your girly ouch. Good. This is what we use to basically introduce the cannula into the skin. Just taking our cannula now. And those arteries that I was talking about, they start superficial, or sorry, they start deep and then run superficial. So I'm gonna start this cannula, the opposite superficial, and then go deep. Just making sure we're not running into those guys. So she's feeling some resistance. That's me just going through a couple different tendons, a couple different fat pads. Anything I find like here, this feels how you doing? Good. 
Okay, so we're gonna use Tia Seal Kiss in Kiara's lip. Um, it's a beautiful, juicy filler. I, I talk about it like it's my fluffy lip, the one that like fluffs open, not any harsh lines, not a lot of strong cupid's bow, just like open and very soft. So we're gonna be putting a little bit more into her bottom lip today. Most Caucasians wanna have like a two to three ratio and hers is just missing a little bit. So we need to just drop this down just ever so slightly so that there's two thirds here and one third here. Um, and then we're gonna fill a little bit into either side, do a little bit of tinting just to keep that border crisp, and then she's gonna be good to go. One, two, three, pinchy. Good, ouch. Oh. Pinchy, ouch, good. Ouch. So we're just finishing up her lips with a little bit of what we call a tenting technique, a little poke baby ouch. Good. So this just helps to kind of avert the lip, flip it up a little bit, give us a little bit more definition into that border, and get a little more of that pink of her lip to really show. Finish this off with a little bit of a lip massage just to make sure she has no lumps, no bumps, everything feels smooth and soft. <laughs> so this is just a little bit of hyaluronic acid. We're just taking it, scratching the filler. Right now it's nice and moldable because it's just been introduced to her tissue. So right now while she's numb, it's the best time to kind of work it, make sure that everything feels smooth and soft for her. gel sulcus that was there before she's nice and flat down here i love that that's so good okay so kiera's all done four mils still looking natural just placed in the right areas i'm just going to go over quickly what she needs to watch for over the next couple of days um, whenever you get filler the basically the next 48 hours are pretty crucial you always want to make sure that you're staying in town wherever your injector is you want to be close to someone who could help you in case of an emergency it's incredibly incredibly rare but it's always good to just be sure um, so basically what you're watching for is anything going white. Bruising is normal where you get like a purple discoloration. When we get scared is when things go white, meaning there's no blood flow going to an area. So if you were to press anywhere on Kira's face right now and let go, that whiteness dissipates right away and goes nice and pink. We want it to stay that way. If you were to ever press on an area and that blood flow is very sluggish to come back, that's a sign that there could be something going on. And what that is is a vascular occlusion. So a vascular occlusion is when filler gets into an artery and starts to block some blood flow and our tissues just need blood flow to survive. So it's pretty crucial that we have some blood flow going to those areas. Um, that would also be accompanied by typically sharp, sharp pain. It's normal to have some dull achy pains along her jawline, her chin. This can feel like almost like sinus pressure tomorrow morning. Very typical. But if you ever get sharp, sharp pain that makes you want to cry, that's not normal. So that would be something to check in as well. But she's going to be totally fine. We typically know right away, which is nice. So I know she's going to be in good hands and all is going to be well. Good job.